Hey, shalom, 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 Israel. Most high Christ bless. Officer Ben and I to my right. Oh, Officer yeah. Aaron. Oh, praises. Bro, I forgot who he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we uh IUIC Tupelo, Mississippi Camp. We holding down mid morning medicine. Mid morning medicine. Uh so y'all see the title uh is marriage fifty fifty with God. Is marriage fifty fifty with God. So we're gonna get into scriptures and see uh is marriage fifty fifty with God because these celebrities these it's it's been an attack on marriage. It's a it's been an attack on marriage. These celebrities just destroying God's marriage law. Mm. You know, for many, many years they just divorcing and sleeping with this person, they just turning marriage into a, a freak show. You know, lascivious marriage is now lasciviousness, mm. you know. But um uh, give me that Corey Holcomb video before we get started. Uh Corey Holcomb said this about marriage. And then I'm gonna show you what the Lord say now. Now what Corey Holcomb said is some street wisdom, mm. you know. But street wisdom ain't God wisdom. Right. Okay. Y'all got that, Corey Holcomb? All right, play that Corey Holcomb. I don't know if I'm gonna play the whole thing. I think it's like two minutes long. Okay. Y'all got me? Marriage is an outdated concept. If you marry a woman, you are setting yourself up to be destroyed, especially if you are a productive man. There is no way you go down and get a marriage certificate with all of the information out here about marriage. Factors. There's no Factors. way you should be getting married nowadays. That's a old concept, man. Absolutely. What you do, if you find some girl that you just got to claim with your cake abs, you go and you get a contract with the heifer where you are all right, protecting all right, all right, off, yourself. So look, you hear what the brother said? He said marriage is an old concept, man. Then he said if you just find somebody you got to marry with your cake ass, <laughs> this dude right here terrible, bro. This dude here is crazy. So now that's some screen sis because it, it you know it's some wicked women out here. It's some wicked men, you know. So you do that's why God laws come into effect at okay. Matter of fact, give me give me Hebrews 13 and 4. That that's that's not God's wisdom right there. Corey Holcomb is not speaking God's wisdom. That's some evil stuff right there. Mm -hmm. That's some evil stuff because you you if if you don't get married, you will be put to death for court. You're gonna be judged. Right. Because you're going to have sex. You're going to do it. Okay. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 4. Read it out. Marriage is honorable and all. Mm -hmm. And the bed undefiled. You see that? God say, not court. Hokum. God say marriage is honorable. Read. But whoremongers. But whoremongers. If you ain't married, you eat a whoremonger. Read. And adulterers. Or adulterers. God will judge. You will be judged. You're going to be judged for fornication. Okay. So, Corey Holcomb is getting, he's leading a lot of people to death. Talking about marriage, don't get married. You know, that's some evil stuff right there. You know, and then another thing uh, America teaches you, don't get married young. Right. Just be a whore. Right. <laughs> Just be a whore or a fornicator while you're young. Mm. And then when you get old, you get woe out. Mm. And now you want to get married. Yeah. No, no, no. Settle down. <laughs> you want to settle down. <laughs> you know, after you did sold your royal oaks, <laughs> you know, now you want to settle down. No, no. God say he rather the younger women marry. Okay. Mm. Now, so the title is Marriage 50-50. Give, give me that article with Dwayne Wade. Y'all seen that one I sent you? Okay, give me that. Now, the reason why I said this because Gabrielle Union, I, was, I told you these celebrities, man, yeah. these celebrities just screwing up everything, right? Mm -hmm. And because they got millions and millions of followers, mm -hmm. millions and millions of people listen to these people, man. It was a show, it was, it's a show, I can't remember what screening platform, but this girl was obsessed with Beyonce. Mm -hmm. I can't think of the name of the show. Uh, but anyway, she would do anything, but they call her a different name. It's called Swarm. Swarm, y'all. This, this, this sister was obsessed 
But, you know, they called, they changed her name in the show or mm -hmm. whatever. But she was obsessed with Beyonce. She was murdering for because <laughs> of dudes they ain't like her. She was tracking folks down that said something against the celebrity on social media. Damn. She show up and kill them. Damn. Yeah, bro. So a lot of people listen to these celebrities, man. So listen, listen to what Gary Union said. Go to the article. I don't really want much of it. Go back to the, the beginning. Okay. Read that, officer. Gabrielle Union says mm -hmm. she and husband Dwayne Wade mm -hmm. split everything 50-50 well, in she, their household. Because she thinks she equal with her husband. They split everything 50-50 in their household. Okay. That's really all I really want. You can take it down. So Gabrielle Union said she split everything 50-50 with her husband. God. So we're going to get into scriptures and see. Now, look, ain't nothing wrong with a woman working. Okay, ain't nothing wrong with a woman work. We in great distress right now. Right. We need our wife to work. Right. Cause we we barely can make it, you know. Give me give me that Toby. Cause some some sisters come in the truth and be like, well, I, you know, he he's supposed to take care of me. <laughs> well, sis, we in great distress right now. We ain't even got control over our own bodies. <laughs> uh Toby chapter two, verse eleven. When Toby was in <laughs> distress, he was blind, he was sick. Look what his wife did. Read. The book of Tobit, chapter 2 and verse 11. Bring it out. And my wife Anna did take women's work mm -hmm. to do. You see what she did? Anna took women's work. When your husband in distress, you, you might have to take some women's work. Did that finish that? All right, read on. And when she had sent them home mm -hmm. to the owners, mm -hmm. they paid her wages and gave her also besides a kid. You see that? They paid her wages. I think that's all I want on that. Now, Give me uh, Nehemiah 9 and 36. We in great distress. So, yeah, our wives got to work. I know I don't make enough money. <laughs> you know, you know us, man. We, you know, they keep us, you know, they to they destroy the image of the black man, you know. We, we go and try to, you know, they're going to keep our wages down real low. Mm -hmm. The same job, they keep saying that the woman make less. I don't know. No. Not, not for the black folk. Mm -mm. Because the woman can go in the company and be, she can have a corner office and we in the back taking out the trash. The black woman, what I'm saying. The black woman can go and work in the high rises and be all, she can be anything she want to be in Esau's kingdom. But us, they keep us low. Yeah, she can be anything she want to be in Esau's kingdom, right. but a wife. But a, a wife. Black man. Right. Esau don't like me being a wife. No. No. <laughs> I read. Can't be submissive to the man. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I read Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 36. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9 and verse 36. Bring it out. Behold, we are servants this day. Mm -hmm. And for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers mm -hmm. to eat the fruit thereof mm -hmm. and the good thereof. Read. Behold, we are servants in it. We see that we are servants this day. Now, this was going back when our forefathers went in captivity. Read on. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us. Just, because just like this land right here, it yieldeth much increase to the kings that they had set over us. You don't see all these big, like we, we in Mississippi. You ride in the Mississippi Delta, nothing but massive fields over there, yielding much increase mm. to the so-called white man that's set over us. Read on. Because of our sins. Because of, he was set over us because of our sins. Read also, mm -hmm. they have dominion over our bodies. They have dominion over our bodies. They make us get a vaccine. Hmm. They make you get a vaccine before you can get in school. A lot of us got the vaccines in our bodies from when we was kids. Mm -hmm. Read them. And over our cattle mm -hmm. at their pleasure. Mm -hmm. And we are in great distress. We in great distress. So guess what? We need our sisters to work because we in great distress right now. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now. Let's get into it because a lot of sisters, you know, even if even if the man made a lot of money and the sisters didn't have to work that much, God still don't want you to be idle. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. This is Solomon's mother right here. She said, no, look, don't marry no sister like this. <laughs> this is what you need to look for in a sister. Proverbs 31 and 27. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, and verse 27. Bring it out. She looketh well to the ways of her husband, 
You see that? Of her household. I'm sorry. Read it again. She looketh well to the ways of her household. So you still can't be no bump on the log, sis. You, you, if, if the hub is making all the money, you still can't be no bump on the log. You still got to look well to the ways of your household. She a you trophy wife. Yeah, a trophy wife. <laughs> a token woman. Token. No, we don't want no token woman over this gent. <laughs> you can't just lay in the bed all day and don't do a damn thing. You know, all you bring to the table is uh, uh, the box. <laughs> the box. <laughs> That's it. I'm telling you, these modern women think that. That's yep. all they got to bring to the table yep. is box. The hell is this? That, that's what they think. All they got to bring to the table is box. But you know, guess Steve what? Steve said something about that. He did? What he yeah, said? he was saying, how dare you ask a woman what she bring to the table? What? Yeah. That's because he a simp. She's <laughs> able to, to, um, to, to birth you. Oh. That's what she bring to the table. She can have another you. Lips. That's what he said, bro. She can have another you. Yeah. yeah don't listen said. to Steve Hart. I don't know how a comedian, <laughs> a comedian is a, a, he a therapist. He everything. Yeah. You, bro, you, you got famous by telling jokes. Yeah. Make me bro. laugh. <laughs> Make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Read again, off verse 27. The book of Sarah, uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter thirty-one and verse twenty-seven. Mm -hmm. She looketh well to the ways of her household, Read. and eateth not the bread of idleness. You see that? Eateth not the bread of idleness. So even if the sister didn't work, she still can't do that. She still got to be at the house working mm -hmm. with the kids, taking care of the house. And I know that's a big job. A lot, of, a lot of time, that's a huge job right there on the sisters right there. Okay, skip up to verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. She riseth also while it is yet night. You see that? If she don't work, she still, she supposed to get up while it's yet night to get everything ready. You know? And giveth meat to her household. And giveth meat to her household. The sister should be up cooking her husband some uh, turkey sausage. <laughs> it should be cooking up some turkey sausage, some grits with cheese, oh. some grits with cheese, <laughs> and some, some scrambled eggs, you know, none of that. None of that uh, sunny side up garbage. You know? <laughs> some brothers like the sunny side up eggs. No, no, it ought to be alone. <laughs> no uh, runny eggs. No runny eggs up in this chat. <laughs> All right, read on. What does it say? Rise, she rises what? She rises also while it is yet night, uh -huh. and giveth meat to her household, read. and a portion to her maidens. Okay, okay. So now, let's get in. So if even, even if the man did make enough money, the sister still couldn't be just doing nothing at the house. The scriptures say, idleness teaches much wickedness. Okay, give me Genesis chapter 2. Let's get into the purpose of the wife. Is it is did God ordain the wife to be 50-50 with the husband? Mm. We're going we're going to get it. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. The book Genesis. of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. Bring it out. And the Lord said, and the Lord God said, is it it is not good that man should be alone. So God said it ain't good that man should be alone, right? I will make him and help me. We'll make him for a what? him. I will make him and help meet for him. So God said it ain't good that man should be alone, so he's going to make him a help meet. So, what, so what's the purpose of the wife? She is a help, help meet. meet. God made the woman to help the brothers out, to help the man out. We need help. You know, hold that. Give me Tobit. Tobit real quick. Chapter 8 in verse Six, and we're going to come right back to Genesis. So the purpose of the woman, because woman came out of man, that's where the word one man came from, <laughs> meaning out of man, is to be a help me to the man, to help him. Okay. Uh, verse 6, Tobit chapter 8, verse 6. Tobit chapter 8 and verse 6. Bring it up. Thou madest Adam. And gave us him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. For a helper. So Eve was given to Adam for a helper. Mm. So guess what? If, if the man can't pay all the bills, he needs the help. Mm. Mm. You can't just be a bump on the log around him. You know, what? you you gotta have some kind of uh you got to have some kind of sense, sis. <laughs> you can't go to the grocery store and buy the stale bread. 
you know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get this stale bread today. Oh, no, see, you need to go to find a good bread in the back, the soft bread. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be going to the grocery store buying uh, 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 stale milk, you know. Or go up to the store and give me some milk. You come back with old milk. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta have some kind of you gotta have some kind of sense about yourself, sis. Oh. Okay, all right. Uh, go back. All I wanted was that help. Uh, go back to Genesis chapter two. Uh, we will be read eighteen. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, read eighteen again. The book of Genesis chapter two and verse eighteen. Read it out. And the Lord God said, mm -hmm. "It is not good that the man should be alone. Read. I will make him and help me mm -hmm. for him." Read on. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field mm -hmm. and every fowl of the air. Read. And brought them unto Adam mm -hmm. to see what he would call him. So Adam, Adam was work. Why he didn't bring it to the why he didn't bring him to the woman? Mm. Adam, God brought all these. So Adam working. Mm -hmm. He putting in work. But he needs some help. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't you don't bring the help in and just put him right beside him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the helper, you know, like a secretary, yeah. you know, like a secretary. Yeah. Uh, if, if you are, uh, or what is a helper for a lawyer, a paralegal mm -hmm. or something. So a paralegal ain't the lawyer, though. Mm -mm. OK, you the help, you, you the help, you the assistant to the head, the head man. Mm -hmm. OK, that don't mean y'all walking. Walking right beside of one another. You both to walk behind your husband, okay? Right. And know your purpose. That's the purpose of the woman, okay? Now, is it evil? No. Mm. That's what that's what it's made for. That's what God made you for, sis. Okay, where we at? Uh, verse 10. Read on. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 19. Okay. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field Read. and every fowl of the air mm -hmm. and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Read on. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, mm -hmm. that was the name thereof. Adam, Adam putting in work. Okay, read on. And Adam gave, gave names to all cattle mm -hmm. and to the fowl of the air mm -hmm. and to every beast of the field. Read. But for Adam... That was not found and helped meet for him. You see that? He needed some help. Mm -hmm. Brother putting in mad work. Right. Mad work. Just like some of these brothers working at the steel mill. Mm. Come home dirty. Come home dirty. What do you need? He needs somebody to help him. Mm -hmm. Brother needs some help. He just he just went to work at 6 a.m., got off at 5. He tired. He, it would be real nice to have that comforting voice to mm -hmm. help you. So I, I went to the store today, and I got you some fresh milk, mm. and it's waiting for you, you know. Mm. That, that's what you need right there. That lifts your spirits. Soft bread. Yeah, soft bread. <laughs> soft voice, okay? Or no voice at all till he wants you to talk. You know, sometimes brothers get off work. They don't want to hear nothing, right? right. right there, you know, right. you go to talking too much when your brother get off work, he might just snap. You know, <laughs> I know I'm like that. I get off work. Look, sometimes, man, look, I just got to sit down for a minute. Right. You know, because I'm already thinking, I just got out of work. Man, this grass talk. God, I got to cut this grass. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, man, my wife kayaking up. Yeah. Oh, God, man, I got to pay these white folks over here. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you know, you just mm -hmm. got a lot on you. Right. Okay. Read on. Where we at? <clears throat> Verse 21. Uh-huh. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, mm -hmm. and he slept, mm -hmm. and he took one of his ribs mm -hmm. and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Read. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man mm -hmm. made he a woman. And he made woman out of got one of uh, Adam's ribs. Okay. Okay. Read on. And brought her unto the man. And brought her into the man. Read. And Adam said, mm -hmm. this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. Read. She shall be called woman. Read. Because she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of man. She was taken out of man. She is of the man. This is what Paul got this from. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse, uh, is it 8? Read 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. 
The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. For the man is not of the woman. So the man is not of the woman, like all these women like to say. Wait, mm -hmm. well, your mama, you came out your mama. Mm -hmm. The scriptures say the man is not of the woman. Read. But the woman of the man. Read. Neither was the man created for the woman, mm -hmm. but the woman for the man. So when the sisters know their purpose, okay, what you kicking for, sis? You was created for the man. Your body was shaped to fit the man. Mm -hmm. Your body wasn't shaped to fit another woman. That's right. That's some evil stuff right there. Mm. That's why when two women get together, it's confusion. Mm -hmm. You got to scissor. You got to put two legs over there. That's confusion right there. <laughs> that that was not what it was made for. Okay. Well, what the hell, boy? <laughs> <laughs> You got to go buy some tools and scraps and all that stuff. Oh! oh <laughs> that because it wasn't made for that. <laughs> Read again where we at. Oh, verse 9. Okay. Neither was the man created for the woman, uh -huh. but the woman for the man. But the woman was created for the man. Go back to Genesis 2 uh, and read that last verse. Uh I think it's the last verse. <clears throat> the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 25. Bring it up. Um, yeah, 25. And they were both naked, mm -hmm. the man and his wife, mm -hmm. and were not ashamed. So God ordained, God ordained marriage right there between a man and a woman. That's God ordaining marriage right there between a man and a woman. That's what the Lord say. Marriage is not between two men and two women. That's evil right there. Mm -hmm. That's evil. Matter of fact, get that in Romans 1. Romans 1. Uh, last verse. Romans 1. So with God, when you... Now, this chapter is going into homosexuality, <clears throat> uh, lesbianism, all that garbage. Verse 32. The book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 32. Mm-hmm. Who knowing the judgment of God, Read. that they which commit such things are worthy of death. They that commit such things are worthy of death. If you're in the midst of homosexuality, if, you, if you're watching this and you, you're an Israelite and you're in the midst of homosexuality, you can repent through Christ. But what you're doing, you're worthy of death. But America say you love who you love. Mm -hmm. God say death. Mm. God say death. You know. Not only do the same, mm -hmm. but have pleasure in them that do them. Not only is the people that partaking in that worthy of death, but also people like Gabrielle Union, her husband, mm -hmm. that, that support that lifestyle, they worthy of death as well. So if you, if you sit back and then you okay with it, yeah. you say it's all good, God say he's going to kill you too. <laughs> Magic Johnson just made a statement yeah. like that about his son. Magic Johnson taking pictures with this big, buff, big foot Negro. Yeah. This, is a, this is a shame. Yeah. I just saw a picture online. Dude, mm. big as hell, man. It should be a law. It <laughs> should be a law for somebody that big to have on women's sandals like that. <laughs> it should be a damn law. <laughs> I wish I could fire the pictures now, y'all. It was horrible. <laughs> y'all got it? But I had a blouse on. Put it up. No, that ain't the one. But that's, that'll do. <laughs> now, this is a shame here. Look at this, man. Mm -hmm. Who is attracted to that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that ought to be against the law. Hit the image and see that other one up. Uh, I don't see it, man. It's a new one that they took, they took recently. But... Uh, that's all right. I want. I want to get back. I ain't got much time, y'all. So we'll get back to. It. He said he was proud that his son was living his truth. Wow, that's some, that's that he worthy of death according yeah. to the scripture. Yeah, because not only them, it said not only them. Yeah, that's they his could, truth. Yeah, that ain't God's truth. That ain't God's truth. <laughs> God gonna put you to death for that, unless you repent. <laughs> unless you repent, you still can repent right now. Stop that. Okay, repent means stop breaking God's laws. Reform your mind. All right, now. Go back to Genesis. Let's get over to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Is marriage 50 50 according to God? He said, You are help. The sisters is a help me. Okay. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. The book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Bring it out. Unto the woman he said, mm -hmm. 
I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Because the woman was in the midst of sin. Read on. In sorrow mm -hmm. thou shalt bring forth children. Read. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Your desire should be toward thy husband. Because God don't make, God don't deal with boyfriend, girlfriend. You already know that's evil. Right. But your desire should be toward your husband. Read on. And he shall rule over thee. That don't sound like equal, equal. Hmm. Right there. The hmm. scriptures say that the husband should rule over the wife. That's not standing right beside one another. Mm -hmm. The husband is here and the wife is there according to God. Now, when you say you don't agree with that, that's called feminism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's evil according to the Bible. Okay. It's evil according to the Bible. It's not, it's no equality between the man and the woman with God. Now, give me that, give me that TikTok. You, the, the one I said equal. Y'all see that one? Now, this woman right here, I, you know, I see some of her videos on TikTok. Now, I don't agree with everything she said. I, I even think she a, she says she a pastor, I think. I don't know. But I like what she said right here. Okay. Uh, the one I type equal. Y'all see that? I thought y'all had it ready. Okay. Play that. Come on, like the bishop. Come on. <laughs> yeah, equal to marriage. I typed it on the video. Well, yeah, maybe I said TikTok. I'm sorry, bro. Okay. Now, like I said, I don't agree with everything this sister said, but she got some, she say some good stuff that I agree with. So I'm going to play what she said. Sis. Can I share something with you? Unfortunately, a lot of women are under the wrong impression that in marriage, that they are equal partners with their husbands, that we all must do everything equally and he can have what he has to say and I can have what I have to say. And if we don't agree, then it can't be done because we must be in agreement with both of us in order to move forward. But that's not scriptural. God has made our husbands the head. Now, you show me an example where the head is at the same level as the rest of the body. The body is the husband's body. That means you're under your husband. Now, should your husband ask for your opinion and get your suggestions? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, when he makes a decision, it is final. And the fact that you guys are married does not give you headship. We are our husband's help me. He is the head. I, it tells I, I, us in first, um, first Peter three. I, I don't want her because I, you know, I think she a, I think she a pastor. I think she is. But what she said right there was some good stuff right there. That was some good stuff. When the woman, when our sisters understand their purpose, they good. They submit. They submissive because they understand what they made for. Okay, what they made for. Now, give me Sirach. Give me Sirach chapter 36 and verse 22. Sirach chapter 36 and verse 22. Sirach chapter 36 and verse 22. Mike, go out. Okay. Better went out. Okay. Try it out. Um... Read. I think it's read, eh? Yeah, okay. Test the test. <clears throat> Sirach chapter 36 and verse 22. The book of Sirach chapter 36 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance, and a man loveth nothing better. You see that? A man, a man loveth nothing better than a woman, a regular man. You know, these dudes today. Like Sanford used to be. <laughs> Read on. If there be kindness, mm -hmm. meekness, mm -hmm. and comfort in her tongue. You see that? If it be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue, because that's what she made for. She to help me. Okay. She supposed to have that, that kindness, comfort in her tongue for her husband that's been working at the steel mill all day. Read on. Then is not her husband like other men? Read on. 
He that getteth a wife mm -hmm. beginneth a possession. Read. A help like unto himself. A help like unto himself. A help like unto himself. Read on. And a pillar of rest. A what? A pillar of rest. You're supposed to be that pillar. A pillar. The pillar is like a support system, right? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be that pillar of rest to your husband. So guess what? When the husband going through stuff, you're supposed to be that pillar of rest. What's a pillar do? Lift. The lift things up, lift hold it up. Things up, support it. Lift it up. You should know, sisters should know their husband. Right. If your husband, if you know your husband having a bad day mm. and you know what his favorite food is, mm. you should go to cooking. When he come <laughs> in the house, when he come in the house and he upset, you ain't even got to say nothing. Okay. You know, you say a few comforting words and then you just go to cooking. Mm -hmm. You just go to cooking. If your husband like fish, you know, Say, like, some brothers like lamb. Hmm. I was talking to this brother. He said he like lamb. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what, sis? You should have some lamb on deck <laughs> at all times because you that pillar of rest. <laughs> you're, supposed to, you're supposed to be prepared, you know. You, you know how, like, women have hot sauce in their purse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the restaurant, you don't know what you're going to get, so you're going to break out the hot sauce out your purse. <laughs> But guess what? You need to have some lamb at the house. If you know your husband uh, likes lamb, mm -hmm. he likes lamb and he drank Hennessy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, guess what, sis? You, ha you should have some Hennessy at all times. Yeah. Maybe up under the, your, 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 uh, your spare tire in your truck <laughs> because you never know. <laughs> you never know what you're going to need. I'm just saying, you know. Have it on deck. You have it on deck. Hey. Well, you know what? When 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 he come in, you know how we come in sometimes. We might not. We might be. A, you know, it's yeah. been a long day, right? Somebody say something. Hey, how you doing? Today? I'm all right. You know, well, it might not be in this. You know, he he been. It's been a long day. Hey. Well, guess what you need to do, sis? You need to have some lamb on deck. Okay, you need to have some lamb <laughs> on deck because you never know. That's right. You might need. A, you need to have an emergency kit of lamb. <laughs> Yes, sir. And Hennessy. Hey, and if he always <laughs> prone to acting like that when he get off work, mm -hmm. I already have it ready. You already so, have it ready. Soon as butt hit the chair, <laughs> sliding the dinner up to him. That's right. <laughs> That's right. If you know your husband going through it, have this lamb, have his favorite meal ready. <laughs> have his favorite meal ready. When he get through eating that lamb, uh, when he get through eating that lamb and drinking that, the hit of that Hennessy, then he, he gonna be calm. That's what is that's what you made for to that's be right. that pillar of rest to your husband. That's what God created the woman for. That's women right. need to Bing know their bang. the women need to know their purpose because we going through it. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, give me that in Sirach forty. Sirach mm -hmm. forty. We need that. We need our pillar of rest. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be coming home and the woman running her mouth all the time. We don't need to hear that. Mm -hmm. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 40 and verse 1. That's just one, one and two. Read. Great travail is created for every man. Great We already going through it. Great travail created for every man. Read. And a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. Read. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb mm -hmm. till the day that they return to the mother of all things. You see that? It's a heavy yoke on us. It's a heavy yoke on your husband. You don't know what the brother going through. He go to work. You got to deal with Esau talking crazy to you on your job. You know, you got to deal with your thoughts. Hmm. Uh, you know, I got to pay these bills. Man, the lawnmower broke. Yep. Oh, man, I need some tires for the truck. They ball. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, man, I got to pay. I got to pay this title loan that I don't went got. Right. <laughs> you know, us, we go get a high interest title loan. Man, I got to pay this title loan. I got to take my check down there. And then they going to, I got to borrow my check back. <laughs> <laughs> so guess what? We need help. We need help. We the only people we for a prey. That's right. The title loan folk, we for a prey. We go down there. We got to. Give my check, mm. let it get it back, right. and then pay them fifty dollars. You know, cause we can't afford, you know, to let them keep the check. You know, cause they, you know, they raping us, man. Mm, yeah. So we need that pillar of rest. We need that pillar of rest. Okay, give me some rock twenty six and verse one. Did we finish? Oh, yeah. Read, read verse two. 
their, imagine, their imagination of things to come mm -hmm. and the day of death mm -hmm. trouble their thoughts. So we, we got all of that going on. We imagine you, you think about stuff to come. You th you thinking about you dying. Your leg went to hurt. Oh Lord, I do. I got cancer. <laughs> you know. You know, brothers think like that. Oh, my yeah. back hurt. I think my kidney's gone out. You know. We we think we got to think about all that stuff. So guess what? We need our wives to do to be that pillar of rest for us. We don't want to hear no crazy talk when we get to the house. That's okay? right. Read. Uh, go to Sirach twenty six. And one, if the woman know her purpose and is that pillar of rest for her husband, look what God say. Sirach 26, verse 1. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Read out. Blessed is the man that have a virtuous wife. You see that? Blessed is the man that have a virtuous wife. Woman is keeping the commandments of God, know her purpose. God say you, if a man got a woman like that, he blessed. Read. For the number of his days shall be double. You see that? She'll double his days. That woman will double his days. That's what we need right there. Mm -hmm. That's what we need. We need, to, we need our sisters, the man going out teaching the scriptures. The man going, I'm talking about the brothers in this truth. The man going out teaching the scriptures. He going to work. He paying the bills. He got all these thoughts in his head. We need that pillow of rest, bro. And if you're doing that, you're doubling the man's days. Read on. A virtuous woman mm -hmm. rejoiceth her husband. She do what? Rejoiceth her husband. Oh, so a virtuous woman going to rejoice her husband. So when a husband come to the house, she going to be happy. Mm. She going to be happy to see her husband. She going to be happy to cook that lamb. A virtuous woman now, mm. she'll be happy to cook that lamb and they'll go got, get that Hennessy for him. Mm -hmm. Okay? She'll be happy to do it. Because she know that's why God put her there. Okay, read. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. And he going to fill the days of his life in peace. Mm -hmm. In peace. Give me that next video about the woman running her mouth from the same sister. Now, this sister be on point on some stuff now. Uh, Do y'all see where I put the titles at on her? I kind of trying to type them for y'all. Okay. All right, now listen to this right here, y'all. Sis, can I share something with you? A lot of the attitude and anger and frustration you're feeling in your relationship with your husband or your guy is because simply you talk too much. Mm. He's tired of hearing your opinion, um, your suggestions. You always have something to say about everything. Oh, oh. And over time, yeah. men just get tired. Yeah. He said you always got something to say. By everything. We don't need that. God even put it in the Bible that a silent woman. Let me, let me, let me finish this, then we're going to read the scripture. They're waiting for you to get to the point that you recognize that you don't always have to say something. You don't always have to interject. You don't always have to interrupt them. You don't always have to let them know that you know everything. Because the reality is you don't. And they realize that. But because you want to be the head of the relationship, you won't stay in your place and keep your mouth shut. And so because of that, he doesn't want to come home. He doesn't want to be around you or he just doesn't communicate with you because he knows if he opened up a conversation, you're going to try to take over. Learn how to keep your mouth shut. Learn how to only give a suggestion when it's asked. Other than that, be quiet. You'll see a great turn in your relationship. Remember that today and carry on. Oh, praise. <laughs> Go back to Sirach. Uh, Sirach 26, skip down to verse 13. <laughs> the book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 13. Bring it out. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband. You see that? The grace of a wife delighteth her husband. Read and her discretion mm -hmm. will fatten his bones. And her discretion will fatten his bones. Sometimes it ain't the right time to do it. You got to have discretion. Mm -hmm. If you know you need to ask your husband for some, you might not need to ask him right after he get out of work. Right. You know, some women wait. No, when he get home today, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell him about it. Yeah. When he get home, I'm going to tell him about it. Mm -hmm. When he get home today, I'm going to tell him by himself. <laughs> 
Well, you stop being a damn fool. It ain't good to do that. You need to you need to have discretion. The scripture said discretion will fatten his bones. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because the scripture already say the woman can get just about anything she want from a man in uh, first edges, right? Mm -hmm. The scripture say the man will go out and fight a line for a woman. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you got power over the man, but you got to have discretion. Okay? Where we at? Verse 14. Verse 14. A silent mm. and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Mm. Why do you think God had to put in there mm. silent? Mm. Because we can't out-talk you women. Ain't no way, bro. You can't out-talk no woman when she ready to go. When she get fired right up, you can't out-talk her. Yeah. <laughs> a woman can say some real hurtful stuff to you. Yeah. Real hurtful stuff to a man, bro. Break a man down. Yeah. Break a man down. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know what? What a man don't never want to hear is you compare him to another man. Ooh, Ooh we. Well, he doing it. Mm. What? Mm. Bruh. Don't do that. Bruh, man, by the, <laughs> he ready to punch a brick wall when you say that. <laughs> he don't care who the, because you got to think, your husband is your husband, oh. sis. Don't compare your husband to another man. I'm telling you. Mm. And you might not mean it bad. Right. Well, well, say like if your husband in this truth, and he, he your husband is an officer, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I seen Officer so and so doing this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, the husband don't like that, man. Oh, yeah. You gotta, you gotta have discretion. You gotta have a way. You gotta have a way to do it, sis. Right. You gotta have a way to do it because you going you, you, you causing more trouble then. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I saw, I saw Tyrone doing this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Why you can't do that? Oh, 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 oh. Dude ready to punch a big wall. <laughs> he don't want to hear it like that, sis. He don't want to hear it. You gotta come another way. You gotta have this, you gotta have some kind of discretion right there. Okay, did we finish that? Where we at? Reverse uh 14 again. A silent and loving woman mm -hmm. is a gift of the Lord. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Read. And there is nothing so much worth mm -hmm. as a mind well instructed. You can't put a value on a woman like that. Mm. God said you can't put a value. Her, her price is far above rubies, it's saying in Proverbs 31. Read on. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. A shame-faced and faithful woman mm -hmm. is a double grace. Mm -hmm. And her countenance mind cannot be valued. You see that? A woman like that, you can't put a value. But I'm going to tell you what, what we got today. Give me the modern woman. I sent y'all a video, say modern woman. Y'all see that one? If not, I'll send it again. All right, play. This, this is what you get today right here. This is what we get in our women right here. The modern woman, this is what you see. And you, and if you turn on daytime TV, this is what you see. How to justify why them as a man should pay the bills, even though as a woman, I work also. Because, okay, think about this. If they're getting from you, they need to pay all the bills, period. Okay? <laughs> That's it. That's the only reason. If they're sleeping with you, if you allowing them into your body, and you work, and you do everything else, they pay the bills, period. If you if you are sleeping with a man, they pay the bills, period. That's it. That's, that's all the excuse you need. That's it. Because you can cut them off in the bedroom. And have a roommate status for real and date other people. Wow. If, hey. I, if I live in a house with a grown man, I ain't paying no bills. See, that's what that's what I, that's how our <laughs> sisters think today, mm -hmm. bro. Well, sis, you a prostitute, I, sis. Mm. You a street walker. That's what you are. <laughs> you a prostitute, a sis. Professional hoe. You a whore. <laughs> you know, if you if you got a mindset like that, that's not of God. Yeah. Okay. You are a whore. Mm -hmm. You getting paid for money. Yeah. I mean, you getting paid yeah. for sex. That's what you mean. That's what the women think about today. But God said a woman like this will double the man's days. A virtuous woman will double man's day. Not like that. Not like that. Okay. All right. Give me, uh, did we read the verse 16? Uh, no, sir. All right. All right. Read 15 again. 
Verse 15, mm -hmm. a shame-faced and faithful woman mm -hmm. is a double grace. Read. And her content, contentment mind mm -hmm. cannot be valued. Read on. As the sun, when it arises in the high heaven, mm -hmm. so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. So a good wife is going to order her house. But what's a wicked wife do? Give me Sirach 25. Sirach, skip over to chapter 25 and verse 16. The book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon mm -hmm. than to keep house with a wicked woman. You see that? You see what Sirach say? He said he'd rather dwell with a lion and a dragon. Mm -hmm. Bruh, look, I know a lion can kill me. Right. <laughs> right. He said he'd rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than keep house with a wicked woman. Read on. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face, mm -hmm. and darkness her countenance like sackcloth. You know, you know, I have, I have seen some good-looking women, but the attitude, how they act, just make them so ugly, man. Mm -hmm. Just make them so ugly. You don't even want to deal with them. Right. You don't even want to deal with them because of their attitude and how ugly their spirit is on them, bro. Mm -hmm. Bro, ain't nothing worse than a woman like that, bro. You don't want to, even if you, if say if, if you over her and she working for you in a job, you don't, don't want to put her in certain jobs because you know. Just like in this truth, if you over a congregation, and you got a sister, good-looking sister with an evil spirit, she can't be on none. Mm -mm. She can't be on none because you know it's going to be confusion. Right. It's going to be problems. Okay. Read on. Verse 28. Uh, verse 18. Mm -mm, I'm sorry. Verse 18. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, mm -hmm. and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. Because they're going to all be talking about it. Man, <laughs> you know, sis, sis did this. Sis did that. Every... Every week, somebody coming, telling you what this wicked woman did. Right. And you're going to be like, oh, damn woman, you know, a wicked woman. If some of your brothers are already doing that, mm -hmm. your wife wicked as hell. And then every week she done offended somebody mm -hmm. or did some. Now you got to, oh, God. That go to like at the at the school. The officer calling you. The officer calling you to the <laughs> table. Man, your wife did this. Your wife did that. Your brother like, oh, God, I understand, woman. <laughs> but the simp gonna be like, the simp gonna be like, well, it wasn't her fault. Right, right. <laughs> it wasn't her fault. My right. my wife, she she didn't mean it like that. Right. She didn't mean it like that. Instead of correcting your wife, <laughs> you know, I know I give my wife that look. <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? No better than that. <laughs> going on with you? <laughs> All right. Read ver down. We're going down to verse 20. Read. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Read. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. You see what the rock say? Mm -hmm. That's death right there. Right. <laughs> Read on. As the climbing up a sandy way mm -hmm. is to the feet of the age, Read. so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. Wow. Now, you know, have you ever walked in the beach, walked on the beach, and you're trying to walk? Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard sometimes, especially a real sandy beach. Oh, yeah. But he said it's just like dealing with a woman like that. It's dealing with like a sandy beach to an old person. Climbing up. It. Climbing up. You can't climb. I, I did that before. You're kind of climbing in the sandy. Yeah. Your feet just falling yeah, down. You losing, you yeah, you're losing your traction. balance. You, you ain't going nowhere. That's how it is dealing with a wicked woman. Now, I sent y'all another video about, um, um, uh, what was that other video I sent y'all? Hold on. Oh, disrespect. Disrespecting your husband. This this is, what, this is what a woman do right here. This is how a man feel about disrespect. Now, this is, like I said, it's the same sister again. She be on point on a lot of stuff. All right, check her out. Sis, can I share something with you? Disrespect to a man, particularly from his wife or the woman that he loves, is worse than being punched in the mouth. For men, disrespect is extremely painful. How would you know? Men for centuries have gone to war 
over a disrespectful comment from Paul, another man. Paul, Paul, Paul. Hey, that, hey that's some deep so stuff right there. You hear what she's saying? She's right. Men will go to war for being disrespected. Mm -hmm. Men will go to war for being disrespected. Yep. And then they get home and a woman disrespecting her husband. Mm -hmm. You know. Go back. Go back. Start it over again. Yeah. Sis, can I share something with you? Disrespect to a man, particularly from his wife or the woman that he loves, is worse than being punched in the mouth. Mm. For men, disrespect is extremely painful. How would you know? Men for centuries have gone to war over a disrespectful comment from another man. How much more the woman that he loves? See, what happens when a man is disrespected by the woman that he loves is like you cut him deep. You take a heart, a, a, a knife and stab it in his heart. And it's often they can't even articulate. They can't even have words to tell you how they're feeling. So they shut down or they, re, they react aggressively or angrily or they just leave the marriage or leave you with their hearts and take it somewhere else. Remember, your words have the ability to uplift your husband or your man, and they have the ability to completely wound them. Remember that today and carry on. Oh, but, hey, that's his own point right there. That's his was own point. You, man, ain't nothing worse than your wife disrespecting you, bro. And you know, a lot of wives will disrespect their husband because they know they got the white man on their side. They can call 911. Oh, the <laughs> They'll say some real disrespectful stuff and then say, hit me. Hit mm. me if you want. Mm. Hit me if you want. Yeah. And then when the man draw back, <laughs> she, 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 she <laughs> before he get back good, 911 down. <laughs> and she know the white man coming. You're going to go to jail today. You're going to jail today. <laughs> but our sisters can't be like that. Skip down to verse uh, 23, bro. Verse 23, in the same chapter. The uh, book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. A wicked woman abateth the courage, mm -hmm. make, maketh a heavy countenance mm -hmm. and a wounded heart. You know what, man? I'm telling you. I had this brother, man, good friend of mine I was in, in high school. <clears throat> and, uh, man, you know, his woman, his wife, because they were married, his wife left him for another woman. Destroyed the brother. Mm. He just couldn't. He couldn't come out of it. You know, he fell into depression. She left him for another one. I remember I went home. This was for the truth. Mm. You know, we used to go. I used to go home for a homecoming, mm. football game. Right. This is for the truth. Now I don't do that, y'all. <laughs> and uh, I say, hey, hey, what's up, dog? What's going on, man? How everything going with you? How your wife and your kids? Oh man, you know, you know my wife. You know what she doing now, right? I said, no, nah, man. What were you talking about? Man, you know what she doing. You heard it. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro. Damn. I said, bro, well, look, I heard it. But, you know, a lot of folk, a lot of folk talk. But that brother was a scrum brother in high school, played football, scrum brother. But that woman did him. She destroyed the brother. He fell into depression. Uh, I used to talk to people from back home. He stopped bathing. Uh, brother was drinking. Brother end up dying, mm. dying, mm. dying at 42 years old. But he could never recover himself from that woman, what she did. That destroyed the brother. Man. So that sister was on point. Your words, your words and how you do your husband sometimes, you just never know. The brother be already, you know, the scripture say great travail is on every man. Mm. We need that pillar of rest, that support system. You know, a lot of sisters don't understand until they destroy their husband. Yep. The, the, now you done destroyed your husband, and you think it's going to be some way better out there. It ain't going to be nothing better out there, sis. You're going to either get on drugs or you're going to be a whore mm -hmm. <laughs> for the rest of your life. Right. You know, you need the husband. You need the husband. He the savior of the body. Okay, and we're going to read it. Read, finish that up, boss. The book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. A wicked woman abateth the courage, mm -hmm. maketh in heavy countenance mm -hmm. and a wounded heart. You see that? A wounded heart. That's what happened to that brother. <clears throat> wounded the brother's heart. Destroyed him. Read. 
A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress mm -hmm. maketh weak hands and feeble knees. You see that? You should. If you see your husband going through it, you should be trying to come up with ways to help him. Mm. If you see your husband uh, can't pay the bills, well, you should want to try to get a job mm -hmm. to get these bills paid. You should want to do something. You should. You should. Uh, you shouldn't be just a bump on the law. Well. Well, he ain't got it. We, I can't do nothing. Well, what you going to do, sis? You going to just sit back and you ain't going to try to help your husband in disgrace? Mm. Okay. All right, let's jump over to, uh, dang, I'm going to have to skip this now. Give me Ephesians. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. So is, is marriage 50-50? No. You are the sister, the women, the, the wife is a help me for the husband. Okay. She, he should rule over her, though. Not wickedly you know the scripture tell us don't treat our wife wicked the scriptures say you honor your wife okay but she should know her place okay ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 the book of ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22 Bring it out. wives submit yourselves unto your own husband you submit yourself unto your own husband not to somebody else husband mm. submit yourself to your own a lot of sisters want to they'll mm. they'll listen to what the leadership say mm -hmm. but they don't listen to a husband in the truth mm. they don't want to hear what the husband say no what 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 the deacon say you know where that stem from, don't you? What's that? Christianity. Christianity. That's where that comes from. That's where that comes from. You listen to that pastor. Christian church. You listen to that pastor, mm -hmm. but you won't listen to your husband. Yeah. Read it again. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. To your own husband. Read. As unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. You you saying you believe in Christ? You you going to submit yourself to Christ? The scripture says submit yourself to your own husband as unto the Lord. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. It ain't no 50-50 in marriage with God. Read. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Read. And he is the savior of the body. You see that? The husband is the savior of the body. You see that? Mm -hmm. You compare it, the husband is Christ in the house. He is the savior of the body. I, I just, bro, I'm beyond which I can't see a lot of sisters. I, I don't know, you know. Solomon say not one, you know. I, I can't see a lot of sisters making it without the husband, mm -hmm. you know. I, hey, he the savior of the body. How many times you see a single sister do something crazy? <laughs> you know, but that, yeah. that marriage sister, she got that hedge over her, that hedge of protection over her. He don't give her, he like, no, nah, don't do that. Mm. Don't do that right there. But the single sister who don't and don't counsel, she'll do something stupid. Okay. So the scriptures say the husband is the savior of the body. All right, where we at? Did we read verse 24? Oh, sorry. Okay, read. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands mm -hmm. in everything. In everything. If whatever your husband say, go. Get whatever your husband say, go. Now, if your husband teaching you to sin, this is what the scriptures say, do. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3. If your husband in sin or telling you to sin, this is what you got to do. 1 Peter chapter, chapter 3, verse 1. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye wives... Be in subjection to your own husbands. Now, don't sin. I'm not mm. telling you to sin. Okay. But read on. That if any obey not the word. If he not obeying the word, read. They also may be without the word, be, be won by the conversation of the wives. You need to win the man over. Say if your husband stop coming to the school or don't come to the school, you should be trying to win the brother over to come to the school to keep the commandments of God. Okay, you shouldn't be at the house going off on a brother. Mm -hmm. You know, the scriptures say you're supposed to win him over with your conversation. How you gonna how you gonna win him over calling him a band, mm. a band at the house? Mm. You know, you're not finna win the brother over like that. Win him over by comparing him to another man. Oh, compare him <laughs> to another man. Can't do it. If you were just like officer so and so, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> he he do good with his wife. Oh, bro. He do good. He go to work. <laughs> Bruh. 
You ain't finna win the man you're over like this. You're gonna lose him. <laughs> <laughs> Read on, verse two. Verse two. Mm-hmm. While they behold your chaste conversation mm-hmm. coupled with fear. Your chaste conversation coupled with fear of the Lord, because you know what the scriptures say. He is your head, he is the savior of the body. You fear the Lord. Okay, so you're gonna do what the scripture says to do. Okay. And uh well, y'all, we're going to have to probably end it with them. We're running out of time. Uh, kind of got started late. So uh, is marriage 50-50 according to the Bible? No. The husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. The wife is to help me. So don't listen to these celebrities. Don't listen to these celebrities because they'll lead you straight to death. Mm-hmm. Okay, they'll lead you straight to death. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Nation is community. 